Today we are going to talk about Earth Shaker. Yes, I know it's very shocking that we are going to talk about skill builds, item builds, and at the end of the video we are answering some questions you guys asked me in the YouTube comments. Before we are going to talk about the skill and item builds in Shaker, we're gonna talk about the spells. The first spell on Earthshaker is Fissure. It's like a long range stun that deals damage and you can actually block people off with it. That basically means if I'm using it like this, the Quap cannot path here, like she's stuck. That basically means either she blinks out or she moves around the fissure. The second spell is Enchant Totem. It's like a buff that gives you double damage. It scales with the levels, yes, but the higher the level is, the more damage you will get with it. Like if you're using it right now, it gives 100% bonus damage. It basically means it's a double damage. If it's on level 4, it gives 400% bonus damage. And you will see it will deal a ton of damage with it. The next spell is Aftershock. Aftershock is a combination with your Q and with your W spell. You will see this small little radius around your hero. Like whoever stands in there and you're using a spell will get stunned. And it also scales with the damage and with the stun duration. And last but not least, the ulti, Echo Slam. Everybody loves the sound when it comes down. And Echo Slam is like in combination with your Aftershock as well. Like when you, are, when you don't have any points in Aftershock, your Echo Slam is not gonna stun the people. So think about that and keep that in mind. How it looks? Like that. So you can deal a lot of damage with Echo Slam and it's very effective if you have like big team fights where you can echo like more than 3 or 4 heroes at the same time. The damage of Echo Slam is increasing with the units standing around your Echo Slam. That basically means the more units are around you with your echo, the more damage you will deal. Let's start with the fissure build. The fissure build is only recommended for supports. You start on level 1 with a fissure, then you get your W for killing curious or hitting enemies, and then you get a value point in your passive. After that, you just max your fissure because you want to set up kills, plus you want to roam around and might have some kill potential with the fissure. My item build in combination with the skill build is the Tango, Blood Grenade, Stick, Double Branch, Sentry Ward, Ward and the Clarity to sustain your mana. Now we are going to talk about the Totem build. Are you skilling it? You basically take a point on your W level 1, then you go for your passive, then you go for your W again, then you take a point in your Q, and then you take a point in your W again. The purpose of this build is for mid lane. In certain matchups you can actually dominate with the skill build quite a lot because your right click damage is insane. You can hit the enemies, you can hit the creeps from like full HP kind of. And in combination with the skill build I would recommend you going for this item build because you're playing middle. So it basically means you just want to be as dominant as possible and you want to rush a bottle. After the bottle I recommend you brown boots into a magic wand and after that you go for blink or agonims or whatever you want to. Now we are talking about my favorite skill build and this is the passive max. Why? Because you can farm so much with it. Like you use 1w, one 1q, one you farm an entire wave. Plus if you like playing middle or offlane and you're playing against melee heroes they cannot get close to the wave like you can zone them out and you can actually dominate the lane with the skill build so try all three skill builds if you want to and you will see one is gonna fit you more and the one the other one is gonna fit you less but so try it get your experience with it the first question of the video is how do you lane with this hero without feeling like a creep i'm gonna show you step by step how you should lane with shaker in the current meta all right the first step is block the enemy small camp the second step is block your own creep wave the third step block your creep wave until you get a good lane position then you are either helping your position free with the cs or you are fighting the enemy position 5 in a 1v1 but you need to think about one thing whenever you use your fissure use it wisely like for example you fight enemy 5 try to get the range creep there over as well or harass the enemy position 1 as well how do i play it cool a fissure block my ally and they die. First of all, mistakes happen. And if people in your team or whoever doesn't accept this or realizes that mistakes happen in Dona, just ignore them or mute them. Trust me, like it happened to me even myself. So many times that I fissure blocked my own teammates and they die. Like I remember a good scene when I played against uh, with no one and I actually blocked him with like one millimeter or something and he just died because of it. He accepted it, he said yeah shit happens and we kept playing so no need to stress out or something or feel bad because of that because if you focus 100 percent you're gonna like not miss any fissures or you're not gonna block your own teammates you're gonna own the enemies plus one bonus tip you can actually bring your own teammates down cliffs if you do it correct like if you look at my slug right now he's like sitting on the edge right there use the fissure here he's gonna get down and he's on the low ground as you can see 
And whenever you like somebody's like stuck on the high ground or something, just tell him run to the edge. You need to yes. click the fissure, put it on him, and you're gonna pull him down. Like this. The next question is how to effectively trade hits with Earthshaker or how to properly harass with the Earthshaker against your enemies. Let's just imagine this corp right there is a position 5 and this corp right there is a position 1. You're gonna use your W, you're gonna wait until you have the cooldown on like 1 or 2 seconds. Then you can start like fighting with the position 5 because you're gonna get your W twice out most of the times. And after that, if you want to and if you like feel it is needed, you can use your fissure, but if you use your fissure, don't use it like randomly. Use it like this instead. So you stun both of them, you deal damage to both of them. Even if you push your creep wave, it doesn't really matter. Like you deal damage to both of the heroes. It basically means you double your damage, you stun the position one, you annoy them, and you get like way more efficiency out of your spells and your damage. The best case scenario for ulti, which hero good against Earthshaker? First of all, the best scenario for the ulti on Earthshaker is simple. There are two ways. The first way is people do not know that you have blink. and You can surprise them like I do in this play right there. The second point is, don't show on lanes if you have a blink dagger. Let your supports out push lanes or your chorus, whatever. But if you have blink, try to avoid showing on lanes. If you know you're not gonna fight in the next like 30 seconds or 80 seconds, it's fine. But if you know you wanna smoke gang in the next 10 seconds, do not show in lanes. People will realize what you're doing and they're gonna be scared at the point where you're not gonna show anymore and they're gonna know you're doing something. But if they don't see you the entire time, they will be scared the entire time and they will play passive and with the best heroes against Earthshaker and my, my personal opinion I only have two heroes that I hate playing against and the first one is Silencer because you echo in with a blink dagger he's clicking global and you can't do anything that's 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 one uh, the support the second one is Morphling because he's gonna morph into you and he's gonna have unstrong agonims and he's gonna actually destroy you plus he's gonna like force you down a little bit by skilling you you will not max your W if you're smart enough when you play against Morphling and the third one maybe is Rubik but he's like just he's annoying but he's like nothing nothing scary you know how to find farm consistently as a support shaker it is very simple either you take the dead lane and you just farm there and sit there for like two Two, three four minutes and farm your blink dagger like i do in this game right now and the second point with farm is i personally think after you got your blink you just want to run at people and kill them like you if it's possible you don't want to show on lanes obviously because you're just going to give people information that you're playing there and you have a blink of course but other than that i don't feel like there's like much room for shake to find farm besides like taking one lane and just chilling there you know but whenever i play shake and i have like a decent game and a good blink timing i love it to go shard after the blink instantly because with the shard you can just like use one fissure one w on a wave and you just kill it from range even like sure people know you're there but if they don't see your icon on the map most of the people are not gonna realize that you are chilling there you know thank you for watching everybody and don't forget to follow me on twitch the link is in the description bye bye peace